It's a little afternoon on a muggy Saturday. Your mother has come over for a surprise visit, claiming loudly that she doesn't see you enough, so she decided to invite herself over. As you converse, she walks around your place, and you get the distinct impression that you're being inspected. So, what's going on with you lately? She asks abruptly. Taken somewhat aback by this left fielder, you tell her you're not sure what she means. She repeats the question, saying that you haven't seemed like yourself lately. She gestures to the dirty dishes piled in the sink and notes the fact that you haven't called or visited in a while. Your retinence only seems to spur her on more. She presses you, asking if you're having problems at work or with Alex. And you're beginning to feel increasingly battered by, the, by her sudden well-meaning but overwhelming inquisition. Under her questions, you become increasingly uncomfortable. You want to be able to explain to her how you've been feeling, but the truth is, you're not really sure yourself. Nothing horrific can happen at work or with your significant other, or friends or anything like that, but all the same, you can't deny that lately you've just felt trained and as though you're not really here. You wish you could tell your mother these things. You wish you could tell your mother these things, but she hasn't been approachable about negative emotions in the past. She's the kind of person who holds the opinion that the solution to any problem is to simply try harder and maintain a positive attitude, a stance that has reared its head in past conversation when you've begun to explain subject subject with her you know she's unlikely to be understanding and you feel the energy drain out of you when you imagine what would happen if you managed to blurt out everything you're feeling what do you do uh that's i felt like this before a lot that you start telling people and you you're starting you decide to open up and to you know give in to the weakness or what you perceive as weakness and you you tell people or you want to and then they just give you this whole you oh, gotta work harder or you know they don't take it serious or they don't take it for what it is so so do we well what we can't do is just let her know that we're feeling down so you either try to be honest anyway Tell her that everything's fine, or change the subject. I mean, as frustrating as it is, three and four aren't gonna achieve anything, so let's try. You attempt to tell your mother how you're feeling, despite initial misgivings that you have about doing so. Finding the right words for how you're feeling feels like trying to untangle Christmas lights. Searching for the dead ball in the cluttered mess. She watches you intently and audibly sighs before you can clearly articulate anything. Unfortunately, unfortunately, she reacts predictably. An attitude like that won't get you anywhere. You need to work harder at getting what you want instead of sitting around feeling sad about it. Nothing good will happen unless you make it happen. She isn't angry or spiteful as she tells you this. You try to explain that it's not a matter of that, but you can tell that you're not getting anywhere. The frustration chokes the word in your throat, and you give up on trying to push the subject further. You know she's giving you the advice that makes sense to her and genuinely wants the best for you. However, she doesn't understand that it's not as simple as somehow deciding to be positive or work harder. It's that those things aren't viable options because of these feelings. You accept your defeat and the conversation drifts on to other subjects. She leaves after deciding you to call her more often and take better care of yourself. You sigh heavily as you close the door behind her, spend the next few hours laying in bed, staring at the ceiling. Yep. This is why I never told my dad either. It kind of turned out the same. I told him, but then. He would give me a similar um, speech, like, no, everything's cool with you, everything's fine with you, but then, so I was like, whatever, I'm good. It's a lazy Sunday morning. You're idly clicking around online as your phone rings. Sam, a co-worker of yours that you're friendly with, 
asks how you are and makes hurried small talk with you. You typically only ever talk to him on the phone when one of you needs a shift covered, so it's slightly awkward. You're waiting in anticipation for him to ask you to come in on short notice when he veers the conversation in a completely different direction. How do you feel about cats? he asks. Mine had kittens a few weeks ago, and I'm having an awfully hard time finding a home for the last one of the litter. You don't have any pets, right? It takes you a moment to process this new information, and you're caught off guard as he begins to earnestly try to sell you on the idea of taking the last kitten off his hands. It's not something that you had specifically considered before, and he seems fairly insistent. She's a real sweetheart, really loves people. She's got all her shots already taken care of, and the vet said she's healthy. She's as healthy as a horse. I can bring her over by your place tonight if you're interested. You look about your apartment and try to picture a cat in it as he continues to tell you about how cute she is. You tell him that this is all kind of sudden and that you don't have anything for the kitten set up here. Oh, don't worry about that. I can bring over a litter box and food and all that since you'd really be helping me out of a fix. It's the least I could do. I just don't want to have to put her in a shelter. You can't help but feel like you're being guilt-tripped, but you decide to give it some serious consideration. It does get awfully lonely around your apartment, and it might feel less empty with a cat around. However, since you've been feeling so down, it might not be a good idea to take on the responsibility of a cat, even if they are fairly low maintenance. What do you do? What we can't do is take the cat and know that we're gonna take great care of it we also can't decline um, because we're not a cat person so what we can do is become a cat owner because we could use the companionship decline because we don't want any more responsibility given the depression or decline because we don't like cats i've been in this situation before i've often wondered if it would be good to have a pet uh, because, you know, companionship and uh, animals are very therapeutic. Uh, however, I didn't do it because I always felt like I can't even take care of myself. Sometimes I don't even get out of bed, so that poor cat would just sit there, or the pet, would just sit there and, uh, and pretty much die, so I didn't do it. But maybe we should try. Let's try to get better. Even if it's just with the most simple things. And if, if it doesn't work out, we're just gonna have to call him. And I mean, if he has to give her in into a shelter, either way, and you know, let's try it. You accept the offer of the kitten and hang up shortly after making arrangements for when your co worker can drop her off tonight. After hanging up, you worry if you've suddenly taken on a responsibility that you can't handle and hope you don't make a small animal suffer for it. You're not entirely sure what to expect, and you spend the rest of the afternoon researching cat care online and trying to think of a name. The evening rolls around and you hear a knock at your door, startling you, startling you, startling you out of waiting Wikipedia entirely too hard. You take possession of a small, terrified black and white kitten in a carrier along with everything you need to start taking care of her. You take her into your bedroom, close the door, and open the door to the carrier excitedly. She cowers in the back of it, and you back off. Feeling slightly defeated, you remember what you researched on introducing a kitten to a new home, and leave her alone to go mess around on your computer, hopefully checking over your shoulder every so often to see if she has come out yet. She hides inside her carrier periodically, making sorrowful cat howls long enough for you to start worrying that she already doesn't like you. But by the time you go to bed, she's curled up at the foot of it, everything eyeing you nervously before falling asleep. Over the next few days, you gain her trust and she begins affectionately following you around, sleeping on you and hopping up on you anytime you sit down to do some work. Alright. It's late Friday afternoon, and quitting time is just around the corner. A bright clear day is giving way to a still, temperate evening. You can hear your co-workers all, all around you anxiously making plans for their evenings and weekends, 
but you're really looking forward to just going home and resting after what's turned out to be a very long and taxing work week. Just before the end of your shift, you get a call from Alex. It seems a group of your mutual friends are heading out to a nearby pub for dinner and drinks to celebrate the end of the week, and they want to know if you'd like to come along. You tentatively tell her that you're emotionally exhausted from work uh, from the work week and a social outgoing like that would just take too much out of you today. You encourage her to go and have a good time since you know it's been a while since she's gone out with friends. But the effort feels futile since you know that she isn't going to go without you. A couple hours later the two of you find yourselves in a familiar position on the couch watching comedy shows on Netflix. A box of pizza open on the coffee table in front of you. As you look across the couch at her, you start to feel anxious. You feel bad about effect effectively forcing the two of you to stay in tonight again. While you are always appreciative of your partner's efforts to take your feelings into account and help make sure you're socially comfortable, you sincerely worry that you're holding her back from enjoying a more fulfilling relationship. While she does seem to enjoy spending time with you, as the two of you sit in comfortable, almost sent contented silence watching old shows if you've seen two or three times before, your ever-increasing fear that your relationship is becoming one-sided weighs more and more heavily on you. You feel more than ever like a burden or a ward to her, and it's virtually impossible for you to see what value you could possibly offer to her in return. Worst of all, this nagging fear has made you feel more self-conscious than ever withdrawing ever inwards and you started to pull away even from Alex herself. So what we can't do is um, that she losses either way and that all is cool. Um, what we also can't do is to tell Alex how important she is and that we enjoy the, the evening. What we can do is ask her if she's happy with the relationship or not say anything. Um, well, neither of these two are really great options. It's probably better to bring it up. So 